What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another gun guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats, as well as some excellent attachment combinations for every gun in Modern Warfare 2. And in today's episode, we're gonna be covering quite possibly the worst gun in this entire game. This is the M16. And starting it off as always, let's have a look at our damage profile. And it turns out we have three different multiplier zones here. Basically what you need to know is in the maximum damage range, it is a three shot kill anywhere in the torso, whether that's lower torso, upper torso, doesn't matter as long as all three bullets hit within those zones, you're gonna get that one burst kill. As for the medium damage range, this is where it becomes a whole lot less forgiving and you have to hit upper torso, neck or headshots to get a one burst kill. And then beyond that, it's gonna take you at least two bursts to kill unless you somehow manage to get all bullets in the headshot multiplier zone, but that's not gonna happen with how much recoil this gun has. As for a rate of fire, this is 811 rounds per minute within each one of the bursts. However, there is a 160 millisecond burst delay, and that is quite a slow burst delay. And what this means is if we can get a one burst kill, our time to kill potential is actually the best in the assault rifle category at 148 milliseconds. But as I'm sure most of you guys that have tried this gun out find, that doesn't really happen super often. And the moment you don't get a one burst kill, your time to kill will skyrocket due to that burst delay. And that's what makes this gun so ridiculously unforgiving. Now, getting into our bullet velocity, this is standard for assault rifles at 590 meters per second. And then let's get into our range values, which as we can see here, our first three shot kill range, where it is quite forgiving, you can hit them anywhere in the torso. This extends out to 23 and a half meters, which isn't amazing, but it's not that bad for an assault rifle at the same time. Whereas our second three shot kill potential, where it's much less forgiving, you have to hit those upper torso, neck, or head multipliers. This one will extend out to 46 meters. It is worth noting though, when you factor in the recoil of this gun, it's highly unlikely you'll get a one burst kill within those ranges. As for hardcore or tier one game modes, which are coming very soon to the game, the M16 is actually a one bullet, not one burst, but one bullet kill within the maximum damage range. And we still maintain a one bullet kill potential anywhere in the torso out to 46 meters. And then after 46 meters, you can actually still get a one shot kill as long as you're hitting upper torso, neck or head. So it looks like the M16 is actually gonna be a very solid option for hardcore game modes. As for hip fire, we get a standard assault rifle hip fire spread here, although you generally don't want to be hip firing with a burst gun. That just doesn't work out most of the time. And then let's get into idle sway, which is not very good at all. This gun sways quite a bit while aiming down sight. And especially for a burst gun, this is a very important stat. And now let's move on to recoil. And the M16 has way more recoil than it has any business having, especially with that long burst delay. Your gun will climb quite quickly, and most importantly, when we look at a single burst, I did a couple of single burst plots there, you can see those bursts themselves are not very tight. And when you're trying to land all of those bullets within an upper torso zone, or even just a torso zone on a moving target, that becomes quite difficult to do consistently. Now, let's move into the handling department, and the M16 has the worst aim down sight time out of any of the assault rifles at 290 milliseconds. Our sprint to fire time is pretty standard for an assault rifle though at 210 milliseconds. And then getting into our reload add time, this is actually quite fast for an assault rifle at 1.33 seconds. So this is, I think, the one area that this gun is good at, is reloading. But finally for our base stats, let's move into mobility. And once again, the M16 is just really good at being the worst assault rifle in the game because it also has the slowest movement speeds out of any of the assault rifles in the game. So there we go, those are the base stats of the M16, but I did want to cover the barrel attachments as well. And let's have a look at barrel ranges to start this off. And as you can see here, every single one of the barrels on the M16 will reduce our damage range, although to varying degrees. This ranges from a 7.5% reduction to our damage range all the way up to a 20% reduction to our damage ranges. And now let's have a look at how these barrels impact our recoil, and we're going to start this off with full magazine recoil plots. And you can see that there are some changes there, like the Demo 501 has more vertical recoil, but it doesn't seem to deviate as much horizontally in doing that, so that actually doesn't seem that bad. But more importantly, I wanted to get into the single burst comparison, because this is what really matters with a burst gun, is how effectively you can land all three bullets in a single burst on target, especially within a certain body multiplier. And as we can see here with the testing, the most consistent option seems to be the Demo 501 Factory, which if we remember from the previous plot, this one does seem to allow the vertical magnitude to increase, so it doesn't cap out at its maximum magnitude as easily. And when you look at the cons of this, it says it harms our recoil control. But we don't really care about how much the gun climbs with consecutive bursts. It's much more important to have a consistent burst of bullets coming out of the gun. And therefore, this actually appears to be the best out of all of them for recoil. Finally, for barrels, though, I did want to look at how these impact our aim down sight time, keeping in mind these are hand-tested stats. 
And as we can see here, that 14 inch carbine shroud, this one hurts our aim down sight time the most, and it takes it down to about 320 milliseconds, which is quite slow for an assault rifle. Whereas that Demo 501 factory is improving it nicely at 270 milliseconds. And as a result, I'm really starting to lean toward that barrel. It doesn't seem to have too many heavy downsides and we've got some solid upsides with it. And that's why you're gonna see this pop up in my class setups. And speaking of class setups, it's finally time to move into a couple that I've got for you guys. Although a big disclaimer with this particular episode, these class setups aren't going to suddenly turn this into a good gun. The M16, at least in its current state for core game modes, is a bad gun no matter how you look at it and no matter how you build it. Having said that, at least with these builds, I'm able to mitigate some of the big downsides of this and optimize it to the best of my ability. You're still going to struggle in competitive lobbies against meta weapons. Don't think these setups are some magic pill that makes the M16 amazing. But the first one I've got for you guys is just my burst build because I also like running this in semi-auto. But with this, essentially what I did is I just optimized for the most accurate single burst possible. And unfortunately, it doesn't get like super pinpoint accurate like I was hoping, but this is as good as it gets when it comes to accuracy, at least without tuning, which I don't usually include in these episodes. But with this, our aim down sight speed is actually managed fairly well. It's only 15 milliseconds slower, which is reasonable at least especially when you're stacking heavy for recoil control. And as we can see there, our new recoil is noticeably better than the base recoil with both one bursts as well as with multiple bursts when we're firing that. So it will help a little bit at least with that one burst kill consistency, but at the end of the day, it's still not like a pinpoint accurate gun and you're gonna struggle at mid to longer ranges. As for the second build that I've got for you guys, this is the one I like using when I decide to use the M16 in semi-auto instead. Now, I'd only recommend this if you have a really good trigger finger, otherwise your time to kill potential just won't keep up. But as far as I can tell, the fire rate cap is still 811 rounds per minute in semi-auto, which of course I can't reach 811 rounds per minute, but I can reach about 5 to 600 rounds per minute pretty consistently, which still gives a moderately competitive time to kill even at that rate. Well, with this, our aim down sight speed has actually improved a little bit at 280 milliseconds. Our recoil is totally different, but that's because we're firing it in semi-auto rather than burst mode, so it doesn't have time to recenter after a burst. Generally speaking, though, using this in semi-auto, you're still going to be quite accurate, and you can control that recoil a lot more effectively. And like I said, this is just how I would prefer to run this if I'm going semi-auto. If I'm really sick of those bursts and they're just not landing well, I'll swap over to this, pop it in semi-auto mode, and do my best to hold it together from there. And with that, that's finally gonna wrap it up for today's gun guide on the M16. As for my thoughts on this gun, I think you could probably kind of tell throughout the video, it sucks. It's one of the worst guns in the entire game. I absolutely hate using it. However, I don't think it would need much for it to end up being in a good place. Normally with burst guns, there's two different styles that you go for in Call of Duty. There's either the really accurate, precise, but kind of slow handling and, and long burst delay sort of a burst gun. Whereas on the other end of that, you can have a much less accurate, but shorter burst delay sort of a, a burst weapon that is designed to be spammed a little bit more. The M16 is caught in kind of a weird place where it seems like it has all of the downsides of that first type of burst gun that I talked about without the precision, that one upside that it's supposed to have. Honestly, if they just tightened up the recoil within each burst quite noticeably, I think the M16 would be in a good place where it's not very forgiving, but at least if you have a really good, precise point of aim on target, you're going to be getting one burst kills consistently. If you don't have that, then you'll be punished with that long burst delay. That seems totally fair and balanced to me. I feel like that's honestly all they would need to do the M16 to make it at least viable in the game, because in its current state, I would hardly even call it a viable weapon. Now, of course, those are just my opinions on the M16. I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this, though, in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.